Hi there, good friends, and welcome to episode 13 of the Tutorial Sect. I'm Icon, and today we will finally get into the topic of Hellgates. That's a wonderful thing, and I'm going to talk about it in all entirety across this episode. What we're going to do beyond that, I'm not really sure. We're definitely going to start expanding our sect a bit. That's why we're taking in Baoji, the little child laborer, 13 years old child smith craftsman well he will have a uh, he will have a home here because i need everybody who's uh, capable of just pulling some weight here and i guess considering that this rest of the world here is just uh, some medieval society this little boy will have a way better life here among the immortals at least they will say so now what is a hellgate <laughs> This is the place where you will farm so Angish soul gems from. What are Angish soul gems good for, you might ask yourself. They are an upgrade material which you will t need tons of in the future. And you can do a lot of good things with that. So, first off, we need to know that we don't always want the Feng Shui of our rooms to be good. I mean, overall, we want a positive uh, Feng Shui score across the sect. Because, as I have might have already mentioned, the overall uh, Feng Shui score in your in your sect determines the outcome of a lot of events. So basically, the more auspicious your sect is, the more lucky they are. But there are a couple of things where, when we want to be going away from that rule. So. What we're going to try now is we're, we're doing to we're going to do it wrong on purpose. So to achieve that, we should just go for uh, try and go for pretty pretty decent combos. So we want to do a room which has a negative Feng Shui first. So we're going to go for something like a metal room with wooden feng shui buildings so metal environment emitting metal chi destroying everything wood because metal cuts wood you see pretty good idea i think so zuruji keeps gathering the uh the Ignu copper ore for the sect in case you were wondering what she's up to because we still need more cultivation bars for <laughs> for that room so until I do other things next, we're going to send our good friend here back into practice because she should do so. Okay, so I was uh, think I was considering a large room here for that, and also since this is going to be a place where we say hi to the rest of the world, we're going to build it down here. So let's do a l rather large building. And these will be iron walls emitting metal chi. So the next thing we want to do is we want to do... Wait a sec, are these iron doors? Yes. We want to do not only one door for this room, but no, doors at every side. Because that's what Feng Shui really hates. It's too many doors. We don't want to do too many doors. Shang Wan Peng, awaiting admission. Yeah, dude, come on in. Somehow... Ah, okay, these are our new recruits, Lei Long and Bao Zhe. Yeah, I already knew of you. Okay, let's start constructing this place. Hop on in, friends! Alright, this will take a moment. Meanwhile, we're going to ogle at the stats of our cultivator here. So as you see here, she's doing quite fine, even with the uh, weak re uh, re um, requisites, no. weak items around her. So 50% success chance. The element and the chi density are on max rank, so this room's already good enough for the basic breakthroughs. But you've got to keep in mind that this room will be not good for golden core breakthroughs because. When it comes down to golden core breakthroughs, you you just want to have as much as possible, like as much uh, chi density as you can muster. There's no no reason not to, as far as I know. 
Although it could be that there is a certain uh, threshold which you just need to cross and then it doesn't matter anymore. I'm not that sure about it. But since so many things in this game are that arcane, hidden and hard to understand, I can only recommend to you a style of overkill. Because not only is there no kill like an overkill, that's one thing you should always remember, but also you... If you are not wasting any resources, there's no hurt in doing a little bit too much chi density, a little bit too much fire elemental power, whatever. The worst thing that can happen is that it doesn't do anything that good. So, all right, so let's see, her breakthrough didn't succeed. I'm not too surprised. It was only a 50% chance to begin with. So she's just going to try that yet again and again and again until she's done. Alright, meanwhile our little chamber here isn't done yet, but that's okay. We upgraded the sect with quite a lot of people here the last, since the last time. Alright, there's small talk in here a bit. Okay, now. Yeah, there's some more up materials and here we go so the next thing we're going to put up would be the gate but not yet i'm just checking out if it would fit in there's one problem with those gates you can't build them out of timber so we're going to build it out of uh, elementally neutral spirit stone because we don't want to interfere with our negative feng, uh, feng shui project it's going to make sense in a couple of minutes, promise. So the next thing we're going to do now is this room has a devastated attractiveness. This is good. It has a empty layout and it's bare boned. The next thing we're going to use now are feng shui buildings out of the wrong material. But to make really sure that they are uh, really ridden by bad luck, we're going to put them into the corners because I'm going to pause the game and show it to you. Turn on the observatory. And as you see here, the corners have the most metal power. That's because these walls emit their, uh, their elemental power only one tile wide. And therefore, the corners are the spots where the most elemental power is residing around. So, there we go. That's why I use the corners. All right, but let's see. What's that weather? Spirit of Harvest. Let's check the comment box. Increases fertility of soil. So. All right. Let's see. Ah, mission accomplished. So this room is now very ominous. First off, the this room is too large and there's not enough stuff in there. So there's one downside. There's feng shui leakage because there's too, just too many doors. And uh, there's also wooden tombs that hate to be in a metal environment. And this is now a room where you will receive anguish soul gems if people die inside here. So now the next thing we're going to do is put up a, a sect gate here. The sect gate is where people that come to your sect will uh, move towards to. Oh, we have discovered Phoenix Cliff. Awesome. It's not the place I was looking for, but well, this is yet another cultivation spot. So we need to uh, carve up enough uh, spirit stone blocks before this is possible. People here need farm tools. Of course. Oh, the strange little elf. It's about. It's been about time. So the strange little elf event is uh, one of the events you really want to to pay attention to. So every now and then a strange little elf comes around. I guess he comes around in winter because uh, he's a festive spirit. And we did buy a long, long while ago firecrackers. So, let's equip those firecrackers to somebody. And let's, uh, let's see... Moving my cultivator with the V button. 
and if they don't move according to your orders, just uh, just interrupt their work. Because we're now looking for that friggin' elf. Sometimes they are not that easy to discover. Strange little elf. Oh boy. Sometimes it's just uh. A lot of people are uh... ah here it goes. So. Sometimes this little bugger is insanely hard to find, but, well, you can only assume that he's going to be around the area there. He's usually crossing the map, and it's up to you to find him. Once you have found him, and sometimes you just don't, because I'm pretty sure, and a lot of other players that I met are too, that this guy is just sometimes bugged and disappearing, or not even appearing at all. Just wanted to say that. Sometimes you have no chance. So now we're going to the inventory where the firecrackers are at. And as you see here, with a light yellow colored uh, writing there, right click to use the item. If you left click it, you drop it. So right clicking, yes, I want to use it. And pow, that's a dead little festive elf. That seems to be what people in China think about Christmas. Anywho, we have gathered a plenitude of festive goods which is extremely lucky you can get uh, sometimes you only get one of these coffer um, coffers chests whatever you want to call them but we're going to pick everybody every one of them and open them so there we go. take a look at the deep pool yay we got a spirit crystal wonderful so, inside these festive goods chests are always dumplings, more firecrackers, and random goodies. These random goodies can be really, really good, and usually you are already very happy about just finding these. For example, Vitata Elixir. 200 years of life in a, uh, on, a, on a single gulp. The potency of that stuff is diminishing the more you eat of it, but nevertheless, you just get 200 years of lifespan for that. Sprout pill, chi regen pill, wonderful. Firecrackers. Earth pill. Soul pearl! Yes! Wonderful. That's one thing that we needed. The soul pearl is the, um, is the opposite of items like beast blood. Soul pearls are massively powerful in terms of uh, water chi. They are, if you check this out, gather chi 45. Compare this to our uh, standard brand spirit wood, gather chi 20. The uh, fire essence bars, 30. The only thing which is really stronger than those are these insane spirit uh, root items, which uh, basically if it has a chi gathering amount of 75 and a range of 2, it's most likely an item which is called by the game a spirit root. There are five different for each element one. We have here ochre essence and spirit uh, gnarled vine. That's the spirit root for uh, item for earth and for wood. Show you the other items once we get there. So the good news about soul pearls, they aren't an automatically incinerating stuff around them. The bad news, put them into a room and this room can is quickly cooling down to a comfy temperature of ne absolute negative zero. Absolute zero. Minus 270-ish uh, degrees Celsius. That's just what these things do. Alright. But, as a matter of fact, we were looking for something like that. So we're now going to put up some displays. Keep in mind, always try to build everything as uh, in a as horrible um, synergy as possible for your Hellgate room. And then, well, assume that's uh, as that's done. We're going to configure that further. What I want to do today too is I want to put up a little bit of I want to talk a little bit about storage zones and storaging in general. Because you now have might have noticed that we have now access to a couple of more dangerous materials in general. So we're going to do a few things here. The first thing that I want to do 
is I want to put up a room here right next to the library where we're going to put up a new area just exclusively for manuals. That's something I really started to like a while ago that I to have a room where just all those manuals can chill out. So what we're going to do, manuals, yes, available for sale, why not? And the priority is supposed to be high, so manuals will be always preferred to be put there. Okay. So, spirit stone blocks are soon to be done. Wonderful. So, this lady here still hasn't done her breakthrough yet. Let's try that again until you're finished. So, since I now have a uh, room for manuals or an area, we're, we just now click sort the inventory here to make sure that my people are now checking out if the items that are lying here are really supposed to be lying here. If you want to make it easier, you just uh, disallow manuals from this pile, so all the manuals are now only allowed to live there. Priority system in this game is a little bit wonky and often doesn't do what I want it to do, so don't be too worried if that happens to you more often. It happens to me too. The festive elf is now not only dropping all these wonderful items like spirit crystals, which are basically the big brother of spirit stones, also items like sprout pills, which uh, give you cultivation speed bonuses, and uh, yeah. There's also dumplings. Dumplings can sometimes contain a special reward. As soon as I find one, I'm going to I'm going to show you what you can do with that. Ah, here we go. I already will. I've already been lucky. So sometimes these spawn a prayer coin. If that happens, it's your lucky day because you have been chosen by the other world, which is basically the uh, underworld of this. Uh, this game, you know. Okay, never, nevertheless, we're going to rub the coin now. And don't you worry, nothing bad will happen from that. They don't interrupt themselves. And then the coin vibrates slightly, and uh, there are visitors appearing. The Torch Dragon. Wonderful. Next thing you do is you equip that prayer coin to somebody. You're supposed to talk to the dragon really important that you bring the prayer coin then you take a quick check if you were lucky and people have dropped yet another one and then you go talking pick the guy with the prayer coin in the pocket and say hi to a to this thing which even has a uh, emotional guard as well but for now we're just going to gift that prayer coin and it's absolutely random what the dragon will offer you as a reward. There are the most, there are a lot of different things here in store. So, well, panacea pill, prolonging pill, metal. This, this is rather a bad selection. So let's tr take some medicine. I'm pretty sure this is a rather crappy thing. Earth flux is good if you aren't, uh, if you don't have access to these things yet. I think panacea pills are really good uh, curing items, and prolonging pills, I might be mistaken, but as far as I remember, prolonging pills were meant to shove back the heavenly tribulation of Yaogai, but that's another day's topic. We're just going to pick up a fire elemental medicine, and I was hoping that this would spawn something like that. So, yeah, it wasn't that horrible after all. We we did receive a crimson fruit. The crimson fruit is the spirit root of the fire element, and the crimson root is also the point where I'm not sure if this uh, good girl is actually able to survive this area anymore. Immortal Destiny Fear. This is a pretty cool event too, which we will visit as well. It's, uh, there are... Procedurally generated events and hard scripted events. The Immortal Dis uh, Destiny Fair is one of the hard scripted events. I should also check out the disturbances of the underworld soon. But for now, we're just going to send 
a core shaper which takes way too much time no i don't think so all right let's wait until somebody is back here so with the crimson fruit now in this room watch what's happening we might have a more powerful chi allocator but also we have now a comfy crispy temperature of well put a steak in there and it's cooked no it's, that, that would be barbaric Put a uh, put a meal in there and it's getting boiled so this is the point where you need to check out if your people are actually surviving that and you see here her temperature tolerance is only up to 100 degree which means no she will start suffering damage from that and as you see here there's also starting to be little fires inside here due to that this is only because the place is not uh, lured yet, and the uh, the whatever grass is left on the ground is burning. Too. Now, so what can you do? Um, it's good. Wait a sec. Uh, why are there fires? There shouldn't be fires, honestly. Let's put up a flooring which uh, shuts that down, or at least it should. So we have eaten your copper offcuts, not as if it would make it anything here better, but that is at least not uh, flammable anymore. Alright, there's another downside that people that are here are, well... Since when can stone walls burn? This is because the environment spreads their fire on them. This is actually something that hasn't happened to me in the past either, because I uh, usually floor my rooms first, and this is the first time that I forgot that. If you have problems like that, as you see here, we're just going to do one thing. We're just going to leave one wall open until the operation is done. This way, the fires are unlikely to spread. Okay. So... The Spirit Stone Lantern Gate is happy inside here. That was not what I, uh... Oh, dang. My construction here is not, uh... Is not good. We need to enlarge in this room to make it work. So you see, there's, uh... The room layout is now normal. And, well, I figured in this game it's not really unusual to... To have to retry your concepts once or twice. It's just things that happen, you know. Alright. Let's just make sure that these floorboards are made and then the insane temperatures should not be that much of a problem. The cushion, though, is an issue, but we still have no option to change that. So, in situations like these, I strongly suggest you to uh, wait with the usage of these items until later because there's no gain if your uh, if your room is just uh, not working anymore due to the overpowered fire or ice item it's not the first time that I see things like these happening so the real problem behind that is there is no such thing as a uh, as a simple formula to you have to put up uh, this many of that and that many of those because the temperature things in this game are very easily inter uh, disrupted by outside uh, things like uh, the the seasons for example the seasons alone can do such a uh, such nonsensical problems to you that you will be suffering quite some time so it's uh what i'm trying to say is that you have to find your own measure for these things what's working out for you and what's not for example i never had a a burning uh earth cultivation room never happened to me before but obviously i i started out with earth, earth cultivation in the past not with the crimson fruit that early that must be the reason 
because here we see this room is at a uh, cozy low temperature and not uh, life-threatening at all. Oh yeah, we can create more of these though. And also, there was one thing. I missed out the Immortal Destiny pair. So we're going over to Riverback City and we're sending our Golden Core here. And let's see what will happen with this uh, place here. Charity for City of Abundance. So, people saw a dying man who was severely ill. This event is being solved by Spirit Stones. Because you are giving this old man Spirit Stones to buy some fancy Chinese medicine, which just cures his, uh, his dyingness. Problem solved. Solving problems the Chinese way. Alright, we're now going to put up some more uh, unhappy Feng Shui buildings inside here. Just to make sure that things go bad. So, as we see here, City of Abundance event went super good. Cost us 100 Spirit Stones. And that's really good. I'm just going to put up more of these uh, graves. Because the, uh, the downsides of uh, wrong elemental... Uh, Powers are stacking, so, you know, you do what you can, basically. So, she's already at the Golden Core status, or it's Golden Core Break, right in front of the Golden Core Breakthrough. So, she's not going to do this right now. She reached her limit. Awesome. Alright. What's not so awesome is that the, uh... Earth Cultivator's ideal breakthrough time is the summer, the fire elemental time. And right now we're in the middle of winter, so... Not that good, isn't it? Fire Cultivators will be the happy people next, so we might be rebirthing our uh, Suraji soon. But let's see how that goes. So the Immortal Destiny Fair. As you see here, the this is a event where people trying to be part of the cultivation world and you can recruit disciples here and you see it's a combination of your sex reputation the cultivation of your of the person you sent there so always send your strongest cultivator charisma and social are also it's a lot but here suraji rec recommends some disciples four people are coming over to our place the immortal destiny fair is so interesting uh, and it's especially because it has the highest chance of spawning good recruits for you. And let's uh, check that out. There's more candle uh, prayer coins. Wonderful. More torch dragon, I want to say. So now we are going to equip both of these coins because you see it doesn't... Uh, there's no hindrance to take more than one. Okay, so now let's check out some more gifts. This is uh, among the best things that you can't get. What I personally like to recommend the most, the most first up is the cloth that can help you with defense. But keep in mind, cloth is for male cultivators, skirt is for female cultivators. Since, as far as I see, we have a lot of girls, we go for that. Another thing, there is one skill in the Sunflower Law which transforms every male cultivator into a woman. So, yeah, technically it's always better to take the, shirt, the, the skirt. I recommend the defense clothing so much because the fire bath, tunic, and pants is really, really, really good stuff for tribulations. It's among the most useful things to gather for tribulations, and you can only get that from this dragon dude, as far as I know. So we get another portion of that, and, well, there are other items here. Spellcaster, Crafting and Psychokinesis, I have no clue what that thing actually is. Exploiting the Ways of Heaven is clothing which reduces your attainment which means the uh, experience modifiers get lowered, and exorcising demons and keeping a tranquil mind. I actually have no clue. Feel free to enlighten me with those. So we're going to pick up more of that defense clothing, though, 
we're going to roll with a all with a with an all girls sect I just recited, and the really really cool stuff is this item doesn't only bring you a nice amount of uh, protection skill, but it also insulates you against temperatures so friggin' well. So we now can just pick up, equip that to Bangju, and she's going to be super fire insulated now. 700 degree temperature tolerance. All, almost tolerant to an absolute temperature, to an absolute zero temperature. Isn't that awesome? I think so. Alrighty. So let's finish that Hellgate today. I hope at least. And yeah, that's why you... That's why I can't recommend enough to buy those friggin' firecrackers ASAP. The first time you see that friggin' merchant showing up at your place, buy yourself the a firecracker. There's construction here. Builder, it's called. Okay. Just decided that one of my people here is going to build as much as possible. Alright. So. Let's hope this room. Yeah, there we go. It, it's awful again. We just added a couple of uh, a couple of burial sites that are not well, and here we go. So now let's let's mess up this place completely and turn it into a real Hellgate. And that's going to be the end of today's episode. So handle this uh, this setup with care, though, because you you will kill people. All right. So now we're going to pick up the soul pearl that we found. If you don't have soul pearls, it's really hard to create a uh, a hellgate. Soul pearls, ultimately you will have more of them than you want. Don't you worry. There's, there comes the time for soul pearls. The thing is, if you don't have soul pearls yet, just construct a room with the very ominous chi never, uh, with the never, with the very ominous feng shui nevertheless. Because it's really not bad. Oh, to have one because when you when you kill cultivators the first time you can harvest and your soul gems from them by just putting them inside that room no matter if they are uh, if they are in a freezing room or not all right so I was just very distracted by the super useful talisman base mental state plus 20 this is uh, insane I can't remember when I had such a powerful random talisman the last time. That's because, you know, you equip that thing, and boom, your your globe can rise over 100. But most importantly, it also means that, you know, when your base mental state is plus 20, it won't fall below 20 ever. So if you ever manage to get the base mental state of a cultivator above 60, they can't cultivate endlessly because they will never have a mental breakdown. Okay, now let's uh, check out what that soul pearl does for us. Oh, come on, you guys. Can't you behave, Mr. Dragon? Can you take care of that problem? No? All right. Let's send the dog. The dragon went away. So this room is now transforming into a uh, really freezing hell. And let's uh, see what happens there. So... If we now start to recruit people from the outside world in the city of abundance via the Spirit Master Hall, they will flock towards this place, which is now at a temperature which is almost, uh, well, minus 40 degree. If we check out our regular outer disciple, I said regular outer disciple, their temperature tolerance is around uh, minus 20 to 25 degrees. So this is already enough to die from frostbite. So, oh, we get to deal with the, the earthquake. Deliver them stones, of course, because... Uh, or is it wood? It should be stones. I hope it's not wood. I'm, I'm going to be so sad if, it, if wood would be uh, right. But then at least you could learn out of my mistakes. All right, this room is already deadly enough to die from frostbite inside there, but not not so not so much. So we will still need um, more than that. Yeah, contribution was uh, positively influenced, and yeah, with this uh, mechanic you can invite people into your sect, 
they will flock towards the uh, gate. It's uh, you can configure that gate by letting it up operate for outer, inner, or anybody. We just let it, let it open for anybody, and you see here, these people would now die from frostbite if we would let them. But we're going to decide what we do with these people in the next episode. I, for now, well, wait a sec, no we won't. Social 75, we're going to accept that person. Social 49, yeah. It's habit material. And the last two guys here are going to show you what happens there. Oh, it's a blind one. I'm not sure if the room is cold enough, though. It's pretty hard for them to freeze to death if temperature is not that brutal. But basically the idea is, if they die in a, a ominous room, without you being the source of death by stabbing them, attacking them, or whatever, it's uh, nothing the uh, which will be a crime for your sect, and therefore you get away with it. And you can harvest pretty pretty gems with that. Alrighty, so that's that episode. I hope you guys understood the base principles of the Hellgate and everything else beyond that. I want to, uh, I will go for that storage topic in the lines in between in the next few episodes. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If there are any questions left whatsoever, comment section is there for you. Leave a thumbs up or just check out my channel. Or, well, and leave, uh, possibly, and check out my channel. And, uh, Subscribe there. I do daily videos, so if you like that content, just hit that bell and you will be notified. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.